Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for today's Geeky Land Geek Roundtable, we've got Tate Litchfield in Las Vegas. Tate, how are you? Doing well. Happy to be here. Eric Peterson from landopia.com. What's up, Eric? How are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. You know, you know what I like to say. Pulse is normal. Respiration's yeah. fine. Sean Rickman from Canopy Land Holdings. Sean, Valencia, Spain, living the dream. We're going to talk to Sean about what it's like to invest overseas. And last, but certainly not least, you know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash land geek. Scott, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Great, great. We were talking before the uh, podcast call and Eric Peterson brought up a good point. So I'm going to give it to Eric. Eric, what are we talking about? All right. So we were talking about the ethics of wholesaling. Um, the, the situation was... Um, Basically, I had a, a wholesaler contact me about available properties for wholesale. Um, I actually just gave him one property that I was willing to wholesale in a price. And uh, at that time, he you know, said he'd take a look at it. He was interested in the property and uh, said he'd follow up with me in a couple of days. When he didn't, I followed up with him again. And uh, his response was basically, yeah, I like the property, but, you know, we'll see if my buyer wants it. If, if so, then I'll purchase it. So, you know, um, that was actually the first time I've run into that. And it just it didn't seem quite on the up and up to me um, and was just curious as to kind of what the proper etiquette is in wholesaling. Tate, what are your thoughts on this? You know, this is something that I've seen it happen time and time again. And it's kind of why I'm selective with who I choose to wholesale with, because the idea with wholesaling is not for you to go and test your buyer's list with my property. Um, the idea with it is I'm helping you out as a friend or as an associate. And if you want the property, fantastic. Do your due diligence, in my opinion. Uh, determine if it's right for you and for your buyer's list. And if you want it, great. That's why it's for sale at wholesale pricing. But if I find out you're testing the market or, you know, sending it out to your buyer's list, you know, that's going to be kind of offensive to me. And you'll probably burn that bridge with me. Well, was Sean Rickman to play devil's advocate, right? Sure. I can if do that. If you're wholesaling, what do you care? Yeah, if, if I'm willing to wholesale it to you anyway, then I guess I don't care if it's today or next week and you send it out to some people you know, but you don't get the option of a holding payment for a wholesale property. If you want it, then you can have it. If not, you can try and find a buyer, but there's a good chance I will in the meantime anyway. And if you find a buyer and I've already found one, then you're out of luck. Totally agree. Yeah, Scott Todd, what do you thought? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I do agree, but at the same time, like, you know, there, there's uh, the, well, what, what do you agree with? Do you agree with Sean? Or agree I with agree with what Sean's saying. Like, what, what does it really matter? But at the same time, I'm going to talk, I'm going to walk the line, right? At the same time, you're either in this business or you're not. Make a decision and take a chance, well, right? Like you've done it. I've done it. That's the only way to grow your business is to, is to, you know, is to put your heart and soul into a property, invest in it. And then, you know, see what the market says. You're either right or you're wrong. But either way, you're going, to, you're going to be able to sell the property. Right, right. Eric Peterson, do you feel like the person in a way is sort of, it's like taking advantage of you unfairly? Um, in a sense, I just, yeah, I, I think so. You know, I mean, I, I look back at it and I'm glad that I didn't share any of my marketing materials and things like that that I had on this property. Um, because then I really would have felt like taken advantage of because, you know, I'm currently advertising the, the property at a certain price. And I, I told the guy, you know, well, I think you can get this for it. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I would be, I would feel less 
frustrated or offended by it if if he was up front at the beginning and said, you know, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and market this property to my buyers list or whatever it is, um, you know, just so you know, that's that's my intention. And then at that point, you know, I could say, hey, that's cool or or not. But um, I think that's. I think that's the key. Sorry to interrupt is like, if you're upfront about it, like, Hey, I think I've got a buyer lined up for something similar in this area. Do you mind if I throw him, you know, if I pitch this property to him ahead of time, if he had said that, I'm sure you would have said, yeah, no problem. Go right ahead. Yeah. And then you're happy because if that guy buys it and you make some money and he's a happy camper as well, because he just got a new, another sale. So I don't see any problem with that. It's just when people try to do it kind of in the shadows that, that kind of irritates me because I've, I've given people my wholesale list before and then I found it, you know, my property for sale on their website. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't even oh, know. Sean, Sean Rickman's got a, got, got had a reaction to that. Sean, what are you thinking there? Yeah. I mean, that's a step too far. If you've got a buyer in an area and you want to run it by them, like Tate said, even if you didn't tell me about it, all right, I, I kind of get it, but don't advertise my property on your website unless you've already put down some good faith money or something and you're in the process of buying it at least. Yeah, but Scott yeah. Todd, how is this any different than us before we, but we close with a seller putting out test ads and, and pre-selling? Why, why well, is it, why, well, why, are, the, why are, as our standard? I think that the difference you know, is, is that I may not have bought the property, but I have the right to sell the property. I have it, I have it under contract, right? Like I have, I have an agreed offer on it. Okay, that gives me an equitable interest in the property versus uh, me just taking a property of yours, putting it on my website. It's to me, that's no different than a photographer taking pictures and marking as their own on their own photography website. It's not, it's not yours, right? Like if you want to shop it to, to your buyers list privately, that's good. But putting on your website, I'd say that's a no deal because you don't have an interest in it. Eric Peterson? Well, there's, there's one small detail I left out and that was that, uh, on the initial conversation, um, you know, I, I gave him a, a price for the property and he actually tried to negotiate that down. Um, it, which led me to believe more so that his intention was just to buy the property, not to, you know, go out and market it. So, um, yeah. I mean, I, that's, <laughs> man, if we're going to negotiate, I mean, we're getting married, right? Like don't waste my time negotiating if we're not going to do the deal, uh, you know, or at least have the best of intent. If you don't have, oh, let me shop it, but I want the best price today. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm coming over on Eric's side now. Yeah, I'm out. All right, Sean, so Tate, you're, you're, you're not going to deal with that guy. No, I mean, the way I view it is like when I do a wholesale deal, it's, you know, it's kind of a friendly transaction between somebody who has a similar interest as me. I'm okay with them making their money as long as they're okay with me making my money. And then, you know, we both have a mutual interest and that's move property. And the minute you start doing things like this, it, it, it rubs me the wrong way. And it makes me think that, like, you know, life's too short. I don't want to have to deal with you. Sean Rickman, what's a clean deal look like for you in a wholesale deal? If I'm buying, then I do the research. You know, I expect that if you're giving me such a good price on it, I'm going to cause you as little hassle as possible. That doesn't mean I'm not going to come back and say, hey, you know, I'd feel more comfortable if this cost a little less, but I'm doing my due diligence and it should be a faster sale. If I'm wholesaling it, that's what I expect because why am I giving you a deep discount? If I've got to negotiate with you, I've got to call you back. I've got to put in just as much effort as I would with a buyer at full price. I, I, I agree with that. Scott Todd, you're, you look quizzical. <laughs> no, I, I, I think the same thing. I think that, uh, you know, like it, it's, um, you know, we, we, we all, no, no one likes tire kickers, right? And I, th I think that if I'm, if I'm selling a property for full retail price and I get a tire kicker, I'll deal with it. If I got someone beating me down on the wholesale price and then a tire kicker, stop wasting my time. It's too precious. Tate, is it unethical to do land arbitration? So you you sell it for two fifty down, two fifty a month, and they immediately flip it for five hundred down, five hundred a month. They don't own it, right? It's on a land contract. 
but they're collecting the the difference. They're, no, I mean, as long as they're up front with their buyer. Not unethical. Or, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, no. Eric Peterson, unethical? I, I don't think so, if they, as long as they've disclosed it um, with me and obviously with the buyer. Um, I, don't, I don't have an issue with that. Sean Rickman? Yep, that's fine with me. Once again, if I was willing to sell it for that price to begin with, and I don't care that much what you do with it, you're the one putting yourself at risk. If for some reason you stop paying me and I foreclose, You've got an angry buyer on the other end. Well, you don't even have to foreclose because it's a land contract. You yeah, own right. the property. Yeah. Scott Todd, any problems with it? No, not at all. Not at all. Hey, Mark, can I uh, walk you through a wholesale example that I had this week? Yeah. Just to show you how it, it should work, right? And Mike Zeno called me up, said, hey, I've got these properties. I said, let me give you, let me give you a call back. Uh, let me think about it. He sent me over some APNs. I looked at them. You know what? For the price, it was worth the risk. I said, yes. Checks in the mail. He recorded the deed and we were done. That was the whole process. I mean, it, it seriously took five minutes to close the deal with him. I said, yes. Sent the money. He recorded the deed. I own him. I mean, that, that's a clean deal. That's the way it should be, in my opinion, because that's what, I mean, that's why I'm not paying full retail for these things. And that's why you're... Don't put in some faith in this person too. I mean, I don't want to do wholesale deals with somebody that I don't necessarily trust, right? Because I don't know if their due diligence is up to the same standards as mine. So I'm very selective with who I work with. But then again, people in our community have been trained by the best. So I'm pretty comfortable working with people in our community. Wouldn't you agree? I, I agree. Eric Peterson, you've ever had a bad wholesale deal with someone in the community? No. No. They know how to do their due diligence. Indeed. They better because now the new and improved toolkit has Chris Clark and Michael Warren's uh, due diligence course. So it really walks them by. But, but you know, Scott Todd's got some problems with that, that course. Scott, <laughs> talk, talk about your problem with it. Oh, I just think it's too, too in depth. Like it's too good. Right. Like, um, I mean, I've got, we've got people that are worried about the water table water label level i've never even uh, no one's ever asked me that not a single like buyer's ever said well, i mean like they might they might say like hey do you know how how deep it is to drill a well uh i don't know call the well company well i don't need to know that i don't need that's not gonna uh that's not gonna determine my uh whether i buy the property or not my only point is you know we're spending uh, i don't know a few hundred to maybe a couple thousand dollars on a piece of property how much money do you want to spend in your due diligence to like, you know, protect that, that investment due diligence. Like, like Mark, I, I'm buying, I'm buying like a million and a half dollar piece of real estate. I'm going to do some due diligence, right? Like I'm going to, I'm going to get a thorough view of that picture. I'm spending $200 or let's say $2,000. I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars worth of time to do due diligence on, you know, figuring out where the water table is. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, it's, I think it's good to know these things that someone might ask you it, but as far as like not doing the deal based on the water table, well, put a, put a water storage container out there, not doing a deal because you know, it may not perk like, so what? They'll figure it out. Sean Rickman. What do you think? Absolutely agree. I always tell my buyers that, you know, we don't do perk tests. We don't find out how, deep the water table is because that would drive our costs up and we want to pass on the savings to you. If, I, if it costs me $200 to do a perk test, I'd charge you 500. So you're better off just doing it yourself. Eric Peterson, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, pretty much the same. I think, uh, you know, it all goes back to the, how much you're putting into that property. How much, how much is it going to cost you? Um, and you know, there's, some kind of logical levels that, that you can take in the amount of due diligence you put into the property. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, but I, you know, getting back to Scott's point, like, um, and this is, you know, I, I would say almost a flaw in the model in the sense that, you know, too much capital in this model can be a problem, right? If you're doing, you know, a multifamily deal, that's, you know, $10 million to go out and raise, you know, $10 million is another, you know, option, right? But 
I mean, we're not buying $10 million, you know, tracts of land, right? Um, so, that, you know, that's, that's the thing. I, I think that, um, you know, a good example is we're looking at, at a fund, um, you know, paying off investors 14 to 20% cash on cash returns a year, right? But they're bigger deals. It's way bigger deals. And that's what we can do. And in the real world, 14 to 20% is amazing, right? But in our, in our world, I mean, Sean Rickman, you, you would be shamed on this podcast if you're like, oh yeah, I made 14% on a land flip. <laughs> I right. wouldn't even tell you about it. You wouldn't I'd even keep tell that us to about myself. it. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're buying a piece of property for a thousand, you're selling it for ten, right? You're making it almost a thousand percent. Eric, I mean, Eric, do you agree? Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I mean, our I margins are are silly, right? Yeah. I mean, th this business is really about uh, you know what capital creation, wealth creation. It's it's not necessarily like. When, when you get built up, like this is, you know, th this is a great place to spend capital up and multiply. You know, this is, this is a great place to, to grow your, your net worth. Um, it's not that place to hit, you know, um, that forever and ever and ever big, big deal. Like you said, Mark, you're not going to go do a $10 million deal, you know, like uh, to, to go do $10 million to deploy $10 million man, you're, you're, now you're taking a lot of risk, right? Like now, now you better go out there and, and figure out where the water table is. You better go out there and figure out where all that stuff is. You better go get the, the environmental surveys done, all that stuff. And then you better be prepared to sit on that, that $10 million uh, deal for a while because you're going to have to subdivide it, split it. You have to go to the counties. You're going to probably be a, become a developer and probably lose all your money. And then you'll be back flipping land to build the capital up again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Tate, how often do you get shiny object real estate syndrome where you go on a podcast and be like, well, you know, you I know, could go out and I could go out and raise, you know, a million bucks and start flipping houses like those guys on HGTV. I mean, it happens. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, but every time it does happen, I remind myself that I got something really, really good going on right now. It doesn't require that much of me. I mean, you know, a couple hours a day kind of thing. And I just, I don't know. I get shiny object syndrome, but it's never been big enough to where I want to leave this. That's, I don't know. Yeah. Eric Peterson, how often do you get shiny object syndrome? Oh, I'd say, you know, I mean, it, it will happen from time to time, especially as, uh, you know, listening to podcasts kind of more uh, in general, about real estate, um, you know, I mean, one for me is, is often um, the idea of having some kind of rental properties um, that just, you know, generate income and things like that. But every time I start to think about it, it's like, you know, do I really want to tie up that kind of capital when I could use that same capital, put it in my land business and, you know, just continue to grow it. So it, it's easy to refocus. Yeah, and you have to deal with the tenant, right? Toilets, termites, trash. <laughs> Sean Rickman, what about you in Valencia, Spain? Then heading over to the south of Italy. Um, do you ever get shiny real estate object syndrome? No, I had a rental property before I did this, and the profits weren't that good. I had a neighbor who was just rude, and I would I had to call a neighbor for a property that was in another state because she was annoying my renters. You know, it's just, it wasn't worth it. And as far as flipping houses, I know about myself that I can't put it all on the line for one deal. I don't want to put down $500,000 to try and double that. I'd rather do a bunch of five and $10,000 deals so that if one slips through, I've got 10 more in the pipeline to make up for it. That is exactly what drew me to this business. And I don't see wanting to get out of it anytime soon. Yeah, I, I love the fact that it's all automated. We don't have to go visit property. I mean, Scott Todd, you were doing uh, some some mobile home flipping. You had to go out in the park, and I mean, that was insane. Oh, I had that to go. That story was great. I had to go chase down the guy. To, I mean, I had to go chase him down to uh, to like get him to pay the rent. I had to go to his office, or to his. He wasn't he wasn't in an office. He was a security guard. 
which I don't know how you ever got a job as a security guard, right? <laughs> like it, it was crazy. It's crazy, man. Well, let's pivot now. Let's talk to Sean Rickman. What's it like living overseas and running your land investing business overseas? What are the challenges and what are, mm -hmm. you know, and how do you do it? The biggest challenge really is just the offset time. You know, people want to talk after work at five or six o'clock, which runs into about 3 a.m. here. Uh, but so far, we really haven't had as many issues as we would have thought. I mean, people are happy to deal uh, over email a lot, or we even tell them, listen, we're traveling right now. We're available anytime on your schedule before 1 p.m. Just let us know when you want to have a call. And we, you know, people are really understanding. Uh, we haven't had really any issues with any of it. We got it all set up pretty well before we left. Kate, when you travel, how do you, how do you manage it? You know, same thing. The system's so automated that basically, you know, the couple of days before I leave, it, they're busy making sure everything's ready to go. And then when I'm gone, like Sean said, it's just coordinating. People understand it. Like, yeah, I'm out of town. I'm on holiday. You know, I'll give you a call when I get back to the hotel or sometime around that time. And, you know, if they have an iPhone or there's so many different ways to communicate internationally for free that it's, it's not even an issue. I mean, every time I travel or leave the country, I'm still doing deals. It's not even a, you know, it doesn't even phase me to leave. And that's yeah, what Sean, Sean how, how are you doing your deal flow? How are you sending out the mailings? And, and then how are you handling, uh, you know, it's just the mail. Mailings are a hundred percent automated. Then I have um, an, a scan mail service where it all goes to, they scan it. I've set up a rule with them where it scans into a Google drive folder. I have a VA who daily checks the Google drive folder and skip traces all the returns and forwards me anything that's not a return. So. Scott Todd smiling. He loves the automation in the system. He's, that's sick, man. That's sick. That's crazy. <laughs> What company are you using? It's the more expensive one. There are several, and this one runs about $100 a month. It's Earth Class Mail. Uh, but because I'm able to set up the rules with them, so something um, that's coming to my business goes to one place, something that comes to me personally has a different rule, and so on. And so it was just a little easier to deal with all the mail coming in since I just don't want to be checking all of it. You see, it's not always about price, right? Like it really right. isn't always about price. It's about uh, solving a pain point. And if, if a tool is going to cost you some money to solve a pain point, I mean, you know, it, it, it makes no sense. Why would you skimp on a hundred dollars if in fact it does what right. you want it to do? So look at you, you're in Valencia, Spain, where I should be. Yeah. We've Actually, got a second bedroom. Feel free. I'm on my way. I'll see you soon. All right. You know, don't, don't tell Tate that because he's yeah. got like these super ninja powers uh, yeah. of getting cheap Tate will be there air, before I will. air flights. I mean, he's like, I'm going. I found a flight $200 round trip. <laughs> Maybe that should be my deal of the week or my tip of the week. It could be their tip of the week. Right. Um, Eric Peterson, uh, have you ever tried to travel and, and do deals? Yeah, I do. Um, I haven't done any traveling overseas as of late, but um, – but yeah, I mean, we'll take family trips up to, you know, we'll head up north or head down south. And, um, you know, still, I can answer my phone, okay. tell people I'll get back to them soon, and, you, you know, too. things like that. So, um, yeah, it, it's not that big of a deal, really. I mean, everything happens from the laptop and um, it just kind of comes with me. Eventually, hopefully, uh, you know. I'll even do less of that, but for now, it just kind of comes with me. Yeah, Scott Todd, do you have an automation as far as handling the phone when you travel? Uh, I have automation handling the phone even today. So, uh, only people that seem to be able to seem to call me are the robo callers that I I can't stand. So, my phone really doesn't ring too much. Mine never rings. Well, we've got a fancy hands uh, automation. So we got Ring Central with a zap with fancy hands. So if they press, you know, sell land, it goes to a script to fancy hands and they, they qualify the person. They really going to sell land or they just want to yell at us about the offer. Right. Uh, buy land, same thing. 
you know, we have a script where they then qualify that person and then it goes out to the right person. Um, so it really saves us a lot of time. I, I love fancy hands, but uh, I'm, I'm really excited about vas.thelandgeek.com, you know, training the VAs to handle, you know, the, la the land investing business. This, this, is, this is part of going, you know, an, each w an inch wide and, and you know, a, a thousand feet deep. So see how I, I snuck that in, Scott? I like that. You're, yeah. you're pretty good. Yeah. Today's, today's tip of the week segment is sponsored by geekpay.io. Speaking of automation, it's a, it's a set and forget it system. The only financial automated CRM in the country. But Eric Peterson's using it. Eric, what do you think of it? I love it. I love it. It's, uh, it works really well. Um, my clients like it. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we're at that point now in the, uh, in the round table where we're going to ask everybody for their tips of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Tate Litchfield, what have you got? All right, so I've got a book that uh, Scott actually referred to me several years, maybe a year and a half ago. It's called The Dip by Seth Gooden. And I'm seeing Mark, you've shake, you're shaking your head. You've read it. I, I love that book. It's a fantastic read. You know, it's honestly probably a two hour read cover to cover. And it just talks about that point in your business where you feel like you're at a standstill. And it talks about how you need to take that massive action to get over that little hump and then keep going. And once you get out of that little valley, you know, it's going to be a lot easier and there will always be dips no matter where you are. And so it's a really awesome book. I would highly recommend it. Um, yeah, it's called the dip. And then my, yeah, I, it's a great tip. I, and, and you know, we talk a lot about embracing the suck. Maybe we, we, I should write a book called embracing the suck and just copy the dip completely. <laughs> yeah. It would work. I mean, and just, just change the title. Yeah. And but my yeah. second tip, Mark, is uh, if anybody's looking for cheap airfare, the website I use is called uh, Scott's Cheap Flights. No association with scotttod.net. But uh, yeah. you're not sure of that, though. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a really awesome website to find uh, cheap international flights. So, so it's Scott's Cheap Flights.com. Scott's Cheap Flights.com. Yeah. And, uh, He's got a free trial version that you can use and uh, he's got a, like a, a premium one where it's, I think it's like 30 bucks for a year, but this is how I'm constantly on the, on the move. I mean, we were in Paris for the, for Valentine's day this year and we flew round trip for like 380 a person, my wife and I, I just got back from the cook islands where we flew for $400 from LA round trip. So lots of really good options there. I mean, once you get to the point in this business where you have a lot of free time, this is the fantastic way to kill it. So highly recommend it. That's great. That's great. Eric Peterson, what's your tip of the week? Yeah. So um, today, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of people um, talk about Google voice and, um, you know, getting their phone to ring and things like that. And um, so I have an app that I use called GV Connect, um, and it uh, it manages my Google Voice numbers. Um, I just have two of them, one for my buy side and one for my sell side, but both of them will ring through the app, and I can answer it on my phone, uh, or I can set it to just go to voicemail. Um, so it's it's just kind of a nice little tool to um, you know install on your iPhone and and uh, be able to get your Google voice calls ringing your phone. Yeah. And that's another good topic we should talk about next week is having a, a buy, sell, a buy side website and a sell side website and the pros and cons of both and the logic behind having both. But I digress. So GV connect. Connect. Yeah. Awesome tip. Sean Rickman, are you going to tell us tip in English or Spanish? So far, I only know English out of those two, so I'm going to go with English, although mine is shockingly similar to Tate's. I was excited to have something different, and the odds that he would throw out a travel website just seem so far gone. 
um, but it, in a very similar tip uh, for, like he said, for when people get to the point where they've got the free time that this allows, uh, we came across a website called skyscanner.com. And what is cool about Skyscanner is you can put in your city where you're starting, and then you can just leave the two blank, and it'll say everywhere. And you can even put that you don't know when you want to go, give me the cheapest month, and it'll list out countries and the cheapest city you can fly to over the next six months or year. So just for fun, I looked up and uh, I, I kind of thought Dave Benalis might be here. And so from LAX, if he wanted to fly on February 7th, he could get direct flights to and from Paris for him, his wife, and his son for $1,000. So What? Yeah. This is going to be a problem for me. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. All right. I'm going on it right now. See you guys. Uh, I need to get it's off It's real fun. <laughs> so, okay, I can depart. Like, okay, so I'm going to go oh, whole month. It. Wait, I want to go to July because I want to go in July. Yeah, or you can just hit cheapest month at the top and it won't even just be July. Oh, wow. Wait, where yeah. is it? Cheapest month? I don't see that. It should be. Let's see. Let me go to it right I see now. hotels, car rental, round trip, one way, multi-city. From yes. to add nearby airports, nonstop flights only. Search flights. Okay, so you want to hit round trip, type in your city. Um, when you click over the two, there's a little option underneath that says flexible and it'll search everywhere. Okay. When I hit depart, I go over to whole month. Oh, I see. Find cheapest month. And then at the very top there, it says cheapest month. And you can find, if you don't really care where you go, you just want a vacation. That's a good place to start. I'll tell you what, Tate, if you uh, want to go to Wichita, Kansas nonstop from $134. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Could do that. <laughs> all right, they're not all Bellingham, winners. Washington. That's not bad. <laughs> That's a beautiful city. Eugene, Oregon. Yep. This is a, oh my gosh. Chicago. Boot, let's go boot camp Thailand, 400 bucks. <laughs> Get price alerts. All right. This is a great tip. Thank all you right. for ruining the rest of my afternoons. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in a week, Tate. Yeah, I'll be there shortly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh it's crazy i never even heard of moline illinois and i'm from st louis they have an airport there well that's one of the great parts i don't know about cities in illinois but if you click to uh the down arrow on other countries you see pictures of cities again that you've never heard of hadn't even thought to fly to and there's a cheap flight to a beautiful city that nobody else knows about oh my gosh all right i'm gonna go to cheapest month the part find cheapest month. Oh, Canada. Get prices from everywhere. All right, this this podcast is really devolving. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> no right. problem. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Uh, Skyscanner.com. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check out um, imindq.com. I mind q.com. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's online mind maps okay. and you can do I mind q online for free. The okay. Mac version. I don't, I don't even know what the Mac version costs, but you know, what's cool is you can get the free version on online. Okay. It's, it's uh, great mind maps that are really flexible. So, you know, some, sometimes you need it and it links up directly with your cloud storage. Oh, look at that. OneDrive, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive. This is amazing. There's iMindQ for iOS yeah. and Android for the yeah. three people that have Android in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do have Android. No, but I wouldn't knock them because I've been tracking people going to my website and a surprising percentage is people on their Android phone. I'm going to say about a quarter of them. A so quarter? That, appear, that appears to be my market. A, qu a quarter of your traffic is Android? Yep. Coming wow. from people who also have Facebook open. That's how I'm tracking through uh, Facebook analytics. But yeah, I was real surprised. Hmm. Huh. That must be some really crappy land you got. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it sells, it doesn't matter to me. I'm so just kidding. I'm Android users. I kid. I kid. 
But you know what they say in marketing, if you're not offending someone by noon, you're not working hard enough. iMindQ.com is a great tip, but I think my tip's the best, honestly. Um, Airtable.com is my secret tip of the week. I mean, you, it's, it's going to be hard to understand the power of this until you start playing with it. But imagine a spreadsheet and a database combined with automation. It, it, it can run your whole business. Tate, why are you laughing about Airtable? You know, I just don't know. I just don't get it, Mark. I just don't <laughs> get it. Like, how is this better than what I already use? How is it better than you don't It's need- not better than LG Pass. I'm not going to say it's going to automate it. the land investing business. I'm saying- So why do I care? Well, you don't care, but for the people that are listening to this that, that aren't in, you know, one-on-one coaching and don't have LG Pass, I mean, I just this is really cool. Why? Why? Uh, why? Why, why, why is this better than Smartsheets? Because it's- Jot it's, forms. It's, why? Why it's, is it's, way, it's, it's because, first of all, Smartsheet is more spreadsheet, not database. But Mark, tw- I, I, it's, like, camp, it's like Smartsheet. It's like Smartsheet. At boot camp, I ask people, who here loves Excel? 10 Twenty percent max. Raise their hand. The the other like eighty to ninety percent they hide on the table, down underneath. They run. You say spreadsheets. People are, are splitting. So Airtable. Airtable is spreadsheets for people that hate spreadsheets. But Smartsheet is for is for it's still is a spreadsheet. spreadsheets for people that it's hate still a spreadsheet. It's still a spreadsheet. <laughs> it's a table. Well, right. It's got a great app. It's beautiful. It's got automation. So it's Listen, beautiful. it's beautiful. That's why you got to embrace the spreadsheet think, database suck and just check out Airtable.com. I think you just needed a tip. Is what it comes down to. You know what? I'm offended because I didn't need that tip. <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> That's a, a phenomenal tip. I finally come up. You know what? Uh, I could have said something like geekpay.io. I gave a real tip this week. And, and, and Scott Todd is putting it down. Eric Peterson likes it, right, Eric? No, he doesn't like it. Look at him. He's not saying a word. <laughs> no, no, no one is. No one is, Mark. I'll tell you what. When, when you guys cut, you cut deep. And I'm feeling it right now. Well, you know, like we, we had to get revenge on you. I, I actually Tate and I probably do like Airtable. We just yeah. had to harass you a little bit. I, I mean, you know, I, you I, know I, who like you know who likes Airtable? Danielle Dieball. Well, then this well, is good. Ah, drop the Not mic. Said. Not said. Yeah. Then it must be good, right? In <laughs> fact, Mark, there, there was a conspiracy uh, against you here. That I, yeah, I told Tate, hey, that. let's let's dog him. It's in the private chat. Let's dog him. Why do you like this over smart sheets? Why change everything? <laughs> but you held your own. You held your own. You did good, I, man. I, I mean, mean I look, if you're using Trello or Podio or I don't know, what what else? What's what's other hot kind of uh you know Asana. Asana, Asana, right? I think this eats all of them. And by the way, you can't beat the price, Scott Todd. It's free. But aren't you the one who says if it's free, how are they going to stay in business? <laughs> well, sorry, well, okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair Good enough. Take. Good but, job, Tate. But Keep going. they do have a monetization model, which right. is strong. Good. And you know who also just recommended these guys was Process Street. So, right. they, you know, they got some geeky chops behind them. All Let's right. check well, it out. We'll, you know we'll what? Next week, I'll give you a week to check it out. Let's revisit next week on the next round table. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. All right. All right. It's fine. It's, it's like I got to twist everybody's arm to check out a tip of the week. I'm sorry. I said, if I just said it's a database, everybody's like, oh, it's so cool. But I said to say spreadsheet. <laughs> and I, and then everybody's just eyes glazed over. Like I said, you know, no, Mark, quantum we're, we're just, physics. We, we're just hitting you with questions like you hit us with questions. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It, all right. It's all right. You know, I, I bet you 10% of the time, Scott, I'm, I'm like challenging your tips of the week. Ten, only 10? 20? Oh, I think it's higher than that. 50? Guys, what do you think? How, how often does he challenge your tip? I just like the way he negotiates. 10 to 20 to 50 without you having to come back on it. <laughs> Don't negotiate against yourself, Mark. That's sales 101. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was... Just go with 10%, Mark. I, we'll, we'll all just go with 10%. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Well, I want to thank all the listeners for uh, listening to this week's roundtable. I hope you guys are getting value. We're getting great feedback from it. We're going to continue doing this. Um, The only way that I'm going to get 
Sean Rickman to take time out of his vacation traveling the world mm -hmm. is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Uh, I want to thank Tate Litchfield from FrontierPropertiesUSA.com, Eric Peterson from Landopiva.com, Sean Rickman from CanopyLandHoldings.com, and thanks everybody, uh, just the four, you know, three of you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I'm sorry. Did I? It's forget? okay, Mark. Did I it's all good. Somebody from hey, it doesn't offend me because you know I'll lead, let freedom ring. So all right, fine. And, uh, and last but not least. Six Sigma, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And let's just start automating everything. Hostingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. All right, Scott, we can do it. Remark. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Oh, gosh. Oh. I think our listenership just went down like 10%. <laughs> <laughs> But we're having fun, right? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. All right. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll see everybody next week.